Good day, everyone, and welcome to the first of a series of Hobby X webinars. My name is Anneli Reynolds, and I'm the new show director for Hobby X. We will be hosting a series of how to webinars in the lead up to the Hobby X 2021 event. And these webinars will have various themes. So keep following our social media channels for more information. Talking about the, the 2021 event, I have some exciting news for you. Hobby X has found a new home. The 2021 edition will take place at the Kyalami Grand Prix Circuit and the International Convention Center from the 29th of April to, to May. And now, the reason you joined us today, creative journaling presented by Rochelle Rousseau. We are extremely excited to have so many attendees joining us for this session. Today, you will learn about a variety of father to sell products and how to use them in a, creative, uh, in a creative way to create beautiful art in a journal. Rochelle will show a variety of techniques with a focus on using gelatos. She is, after all, the gelatos queen. If you have any questions during the session, please post these in the Q&A box. Rochelle will answer the technique-specific questions at the end of the session. We also have some of the Faber-Castell experts on hand to answer product-specific questions. So, before I hand over to Rochelle, a little bit more about her. She's an accountant by day and a creative by night, has four beautiful children, and she lives in Pretoria, South Africa. She mentioned to me that her personality type is that of a typical accountant. Order, symmetry, and balance, reconciliations. And she's even a bit of a perfectionist. She also said she never really felt extremely autistic. But that all changed in June 2017 when her husband saw an advertisement for a Bible journaling class. And today, here we are, in the presence of our very own gelato queen, hailing from Pretoria, I introduce to you Rochelle Rousseau. Good evening today, it's really such an honor for me to be here. And uh, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit about my favorite medium to use in art, which is the Faber-Castell gelatos. Um, and before we do that, I'm just going to uh, show you the art journal that I'm going to be working in. Today I'm working in an art journal by Kay Craft. It is called a Lacey Lou. And it is an art journal that you can assemble by yourself. And it's got like various inserts that you can then um, decorate and use as an art journal. I'm going to be using this specific Lacey cut today, which is the diagonal diamond one. And I've got one just a side here, which I'm going to use for this specific project. So let's get our page ready. I'm going to be using this side of the page because I wanted to show um, on the front. And I'm going to be showing you some, some gelato techniques, um, one, some of my favorite ones, some of the favorite tools that I use with gelatos. Um, and for the first technique that we want to do, we want to put some gel medium down. Gel medium is a glue base. So it creates like a plastic that will resist the gelatos. So um, I'm going to use 13 Arts um, gel medium. This is a multi-purpose gel medium. It is a bit thicker in consistency than some of the other more liquid gel mediums. I'm going to be applying it with a card, with a gift card. What you want for this specific technique is a card that's kind of flexible. So maybe not your credit card because it's a bit harder and harder on the pocket too. So use your flexible gift cards or club cards, something that's got quite a bit of bend. You can also use a um, palette knife and I use the palette knife kind of to scoop it onto my gift card. And then I'm gonna be using some uh, Room 5 Graphics stencils. I love these stencils, they are a good quality stencil so that works for me. And I'm going to be applying this gel medium onto the side here of my card, literally just a little pea pod kind of 
Is that the right word? P pod P size. And I'm going to be scraping it through the stencil. So the way that I'm going to be doing that is put my stencil down 90 degrees or my card down 90 degrees onto the stencil. And your mother told you never use your, your maths. That's not true. 90 degrees. And then bend it down and scrape it through. Now you want to be careful not to overwork it. So scrape again and again and again because it's going to get under the stencil and that's going to um, dry like that and ruin the resist technique that the gel medium has with the gelatos. So I'm literally just going to scrape it through onto my page like that. When you take it off, you want to take it off as straight to the top as you can so that it doesn't move. Again, you don't want that gelato, uh, gel medium, the, the, the liquid to go under the stencil onto the page because your clear crisp lines will then be affected. So as straight as you possibly can, lift it up and you'll see that there's some texture left behind uh, similar to the stencil. Now with this, you wanna let it dry uh, properly. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here, watch or have you watch me dry paint. So I've prepared one in advanced that is already dry. And I will then, for this specific project, I'm gonna repeat this process on the bottom here and I'm going to have kind of a diagonal corner over here. Now uh, with the gel medium, like I said, you want it to dry properly so that it has that resist technique. If you're using a stencil, you want to put the stencil in water as quick as possible with gel medium, otherwise it gets stuck into the little um, grooves of that stencil, which means that it gets dry and it's pretty much permanent plastic. So let's move on to my already dried piece that I've got here. And I don't know, I hope you can see that it's got the dried gel medium. So there's dried, can you see? Correct. Now I'm gonna be using my favorite technique with the uh, gelatos. And I applied using a foundation contour makeup brush. Now that's a mouthful. And when you go in to buy these foundation contour makeup brushes, uh, people look at you funny because you don't necessarily do makeup, but you do do art. So I just tell them it's for art. That's why I buy these in bulk. And what I've done is I've kind of in advance um, marked my colors so that I don't get the brown. You don't want to get mud. If you're going to mix greens with reds, you're going to get mud. So you want to kind of keep the color groups together. Now I use this technique. You can also use some makeup brush or blending sponges. They work just as well. You can also use a wet wipe and I will show you this technique in just a minute. But for right now, I'm going to use a piece of packaging. I'm going to just use this old or the stencil container. And I'm gonna use the Nebula uh, Gelato. This is from the iridescence range. There is five ranges of gelatos that you can get alongside with some smaller ones. There are the pastel ones, the brights, the metallics, the iridescence and the translucence. Now the iridescence have got like a galaxy shimmer. And so you'll see that even with their naming, it is uh, the names of what sounds like space. So this specific one is called Nebula. It's got a beautiful shimmer to it in this color. And then I'm gonna scribble it down on my nonstick surface. Any nonstick surface will do like you see, I'm using just a piece of packaging, scribbling it down. You can scribble it down quite a bit. And then I'm gonna be using this makeup um, foundation contour brush, picking up my gelatos or the pigment like this. Gelatos is a uh, pigment stick, so it's got color in it. It is water soluble. So if you do use it with water, it uh, makes like a water color. And I'm gonna show you a bit of that in a minute as well. So you'll see me blending over here. And the areas where the gel medium has dried, it resists the gelato, but the paper porous surface then kind of sucks it up, which creates this beautiful color that we want on here. So just keep on picking it up and blending it on with this foundation contour makeup brush. Now, if you don't have one, what would you do? You can use a makeup sponge, pick it up. It is a little bit more challenging doing it that way, but it's not impossible. So there you go. And I've even used at times my fingers to just pick up the 
gelato and you can blend it like that as well. Another way to do it is to take a wet wipe and do your, or wet your finger with the wet wipe first and then you can just rub it over the same area and you get those effects pretty much everywhere but my favorite look is the one with the foundation contour makeup brush because it, it's like it's got texture. Um, it just makes beautifully soft, even blend. Um, and I, I actually had that question before the webinar started, is what's the best way to blend your gelatos? It's either with a wet wipe or with a foundation contour makeup brush. There we go. So I've got my resist going quite well here. And then what I want to do next is I want to show you how you then can use the foundation makeup contour brush. That's a mouthful, isn't it? I said I was going to say this the most today. Through a stencil, and I'm going to be using a script stencil by Room 5 Graphics. And I'm going to use a different color. I think I'll use the Galaxy color, which is a beautiful purple. I'm just going to find a clean spot on my non-stick surface and find my purple blending brush, pick it up in the same way, and then place my stencil where I want it. You always want your stencil kind of off center so that it doesn't have any harsh um, lines where the stencil ends. So that works great. And you just, in the same way as we just did this, the blending for the gel medium resist technique, we're gonna go kind of over all the places there um, that is still white. So now we're bringing some color into the white areas. And we're, this you can then obviously darken up by adding more pigment. So scroll down some more gelatos. The gelatos are great because it's like ice cream, except it doesn't happen well. It doesn't add anything on the hips. <laughs> When you want a stencil, you want to make sure that you don't uh, lift up too much or move the stencil too much. And many times using a piece of washi tape to secure your stencil down is the way to go. I do want to move this down just a little bit to get the script more on this side. And as you see, I am blending the colors over one another. So that's the other great thing I really like about gelatos is that you can uh, build color and add color on top of one another. And if it's not wet, it's not gonna mix the colors. So if you look at your basic color charts, you'll look at um, you know, purple and blue making a lighter color purple. Um, in this case, it's building the color on top of one another because we're using it in a dry format. Now I wanna use one of my other favorite techniques, which is to spray with gelatos. And I'm going to just clean up my surface quickly with some wet wipes. See, even wet wipes. People go buy makeup brushes and wet wipes for art and not for uh, what they're supposed to be used for. <laughs> so this is another one of my very favorite techniques. I'm going to be making my own spray. Now, if you know anything about alcohol sprays that are out there, it's very expensive for uh, you know colors, different colors. And then because it's alcohol based, many times the micro powder gets stuck in your uh, spray mechanism. So the best way to do it, in my opinion, you know, gelatos, <laughs> it just is what it is. I take my gelatos, I scribble it into a palette. These are just very cost-effective little palettes. And I scribble it in every one of these so that I can get a good amount of color. Then I add a little bit of water. If you remember, I, I told you that gelatos are water reactive or water soluble. So they do dissolve with water. I add a little bit of water to each using a pipette, very inexpensive tool. I take my brush and I mix the gelato so that the color and the water dissolve. Once that is done, I'm going to take this and pick it up with this pipette. Um, in the same way that I just put in the water, I'm going to pick up the mixed color now and I'm going to add it to one of these Olika uh, squirty bottles that you can pick up at any plastic place. I've already pre-done this. Um, doing this quite a few times over into a bottle and I've got it ready mixed. 
So I do want to show you what that thing looks like. And I want to kind of uh, have a bit of negative space working in here. And I'm going to do this by taking some circles that I punched in advance. Um, and I'm just going to add them in various spots because I want some white space along with the spray that I'm using. So let's do it like that. And then you'll see I've now made my own little spray uh, that isn't alcohol based. So it doesn't bleed through on thin paper either. So that's a plus. Um, and I'm just going to spray it. Now that reacts with the stencil gelatas as well, setting the stencil image. So water sets gelatas and heat sets gelatas. If you ever wondered about that, you want to set your gelatas and you're worried about them moving afterwards, water will set them. So re or activating them with a wet wipe or spraying over them or adding water to them will set them, which is what we want. And there we go. We've got our little white space images over there. And then we let this dry. And I'm so kind because I'm not uh, letting you watch paint dry. Isn't that just great? Let me just show you to top camera. <laughs> okay. So you can see the white space. You can see the sprayed effect. And you can see um, the gel medium resist. Now, if you're not seeing the gel medium resist as clearly, you can just take a paper towel or a serviette, one of your husband's takeaway serviettes, <laughs> and just wipe it off and it'll come off and show the gel medium with the color that's underneath it, which is the white surface that we're working on. Okay, so there's that. And like I said, I'm not gonna let you watch paint dry. <laughs> Nothing more frustrating than that. Um, I've already prepared one that is clear and dry. Now I want to create a bit of a focus point um, on this art journaling page, and I'm going to be making my own little embellishments. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. And in this in, uh, demonstration of how I'm going to make my own little elements, embellishments, or die cuts, or however you want to put that. I'm going to show you uh, some of the beauties of gelatos and how they can blend and will blend. I'm going to continue using this Comet color. And I'm scribbling it directly onto my piece of paper. I just used uh, 160 GSM white cardstock or project board, they call it. And I'm going to use the Nebula again sticking with kind of the colors that I've got in my art journal page already. And I'm scribbling it, mixing it over one another. And you can see the intensity of that color. It's just beautiful. I wish you could see the sparkle. It's got a beautiful shimmer. Now, blending this, there are various ways. Um, like I said, it, had, it was a question that I had with regards to um, how do you blend gelatos? How do I bring the two colors into one another? And like I said, finger is a great way. <laughs> and you can see that it really is just creamy smooth and you can blend it beautifully just using your finger. If you do feel that it's dried out a little bit, just taking your finger onto a wet wipe, that little bit of moisture is enough to be able to blend some more. Now we want kind of a, a grungy look to this and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So with this, I'm then gonna take uh, my punches. I've got some circle punches and I'm gonna just punch a few of these circles out in various sizes I've got. And I'm not an inches kind of person. <laughs> I don't know the, the, the imperial as well as I know the metric, but yeah. So this is, I think, a one inch punch and I'll punch that out. And you don't want to have it perfectly just green or perfectly just blue. You kind of want the intensity of the colors mixed in your different sizes. This is a seven, seven eighth punch. And then I want some big ones, big circles in that range. 
as well. And this is kind of the effect that I want you to see that we've got the blended images or blended die cuts, circles like that with beautiful different colors, et cetera, et cetera. Now what I wanna do is I want to add a bit of splatters. Now you can add some splatters to your gelatas as well or to your images as well. I just wanna get plastic, maybe get it clean plastic. <laughs> Hold on, I have one. And I wanna add some splatters to this using my gelatos. So I'm gonna use a the purple one we use, it's called Galaxy. I'm going to scribble it on there. I'm going to take a brush and take some water, just a normal brush with some normal water, add a bit of water on there so that it's movable. And once it's movable, I'm going to take the ninja finger and splatter. Now you can also do this with uh, a toothbrush or something that you flick um, that works just as well. But then you see you've got spray all over the show. So as we clean that a bit, then I can show it to you from the top. You can see the, the little splatters. Does my plastic reflect a bit? So let me show you some splattered effects on my lovely circle embellishment. But now this is kind of flat on the white surface uh, in the same way that the actual white page is. By flat, I mean there's no dimension to it. So the easiest way to add dimension to these little circle embellishments is to then take some Anita's 3D gloss uh, I like this. You, you get various kinds of 3D gloss and you want to um, get something that then sets with a 3D effect. It makes kind of like an epoxy sticker, if, if that means anything to you. It didn't mean anything to me when I started. <laughs> and I've got a Susati stick. Yeah, well, Susati, it's an Afrikaans word. It's just the way we work. And I'm going to use this to keep it down and add the gloss to it. So like I said, this has a, it's a glossy glue. You can also use this as glue. Glossy accents is another one that you can use. And I'm just going to add some dimension, some height and gloss to these little embellishments. And I'm going to let them dry like that. I'm going to just show you what this looks like without getting glue all over myself, which has happened many times. So it then gives it that very shiny height. You can see the height to it. Okay, so before we carry on, let's make some space so that you can see. Okay. Now these take a little while to dry. So what I do is I prepare a whole bunch in advance. Um, that way I can use them for all kinds of projects. And it doesn't have to just be circle punches. You can use whatever punches you have and make your own little epoxy stickers. You can even take some stickers that you've bought and add some dimension to them or, or puffiness to them using this uh, gloss, 3D gloss that you, that you can purchase. Now, like I said, I've prepared a few in advance so that I could use them on my uh, project today. And they are perfectly dry. <laughs> in fact, so dry that they got stuck, stuck onto one another in the preparation phase, which that happens. That's, I think, the thing that I love about art journaling and especially with my accounting brain is trying to Take the perfect out of it to work with the messes, try out the products and see how it reacts in different uh, places. And, and that is just free. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough for you, which is, it's a lot of fun. You can get to have a lot of fun. So I said I wanted them in various sizes and I'm going to stick them just kind of, I do want to see the white spaces that we left. And I'm going to use some Tombow multi-liquid glue. 
which is a very strong blue. It comes out white and dries clear. And I just add a little bit at the back. And stick it down. And I want about mm, maybe six different sizes or six of these little circles on here. And you can see it immediately adds some dimension or some texture to my project in various places. So there's another nice fun thing that you can do with your gelatas is make your own embellishments. Let me take a very big one. So with an art journal page, you want to have a like I said, a focal point, something that draws your eye. Sometimes the sentiment, I think, is the best to draw your eye to a specific something. I am using these little bubbles or these little galaxies. Earth, they look like Earth, don't they? And I'm using them as my focus point, going down in the diagonal, eye, uh, diagonal line so that my eye can catch the flow of it. You can see I'm working in diagonals. And there you go. So now I want to add some um, something to this that makes it pop a little bit more. And I think the best would be to take some of our gelato and do some more splatters. I'm going to use that purple again. Now, this is great to use up the medium that you've scribbled down, but I do want to have some more extra. And I'm going to just take water. Activate my gelatos with the water and then splatter some of the places that look. A splatter fixes everything. Like if it ever looks dull, just add a splatter. In your white space, you want some splatters. Okay, so once that is done, I'm gonna just clean up the surface. And now what I would like to do is I would like to use some, <laughs> I would like to use some pencils and I use the watercolor pencils uh, from Bobic Style. They're great for this purpose. They are activated by water. And so I'm gonna be just outlining or giving some, make it pop, they say, to make it pop, let's make it pop. And I just use this to outline roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect, just roughly outline and we're going to activate it with an aqua brush in a minute. So the black on this specific out layout, sometimes you'll want to use some white highlight spots, sometimes you'll want to use some black um, and in this case I wanted to kind of stand out a bit more so I'm going to use the black and just take some water and activate that so that it flows a bit more. And then that just gives it that little bit of stick out that we want. Okay. So now that we have finished our background and we've worked on our little um, embellishments, we want to get something in the eye that's going to read and be um, a bit more fun to look at or gives the page some meaning. We obviously want to do some meaningful something. <laughs> um, that focus point that we were talking about just now. And I'm using some Felicity Jane stamps. This is where you can use your stamp sets to galore. You always get those fun stamp sets uh, with the magazines at Hobby X. So look out for that stand this year. Uh, and those stamp sets can be used. The words can be used for your focus point. Uh, the little elements, in this case, I'm going to be using the butterflies. And again, I want to show you quickly how I stamp. You can stamp with gelatos. Did you know that? You actually use your gelatos to stamp with. And I'm going to take one of these to demonstrate. It's a very technical thing, so you might need to pay special attention. Uh, you probably would need like a bit of a degree to be able to get this done. Not too sure. If you don't succeed, try and try again. Um, you know, some of us take about three years to get our degrees. So that's kind of what you're working towards. So what you'll do is you'll scribble some gelatos. Have I said that? 
scribble some jello dust on your non-stick surface. And then here's the trick. You've got to put enough moisture on there to pick up the gelato without putting too much so that it smushes, which is another technical term, is smushing. But for now, we're going to do stamping, okay? So, did you get that? Did you miss it? Do you need to do it again? Maybe this is not the best thing to do during the specific time that we're in. But there you go. You can stamp the gelatos. Some of you may miss that, so I'm going to repeat this course. If you fail the first exam and you have to do the repeat course, here's where you do it. You go, don't share, okay? And stamp down with it. Okay, so you get a stamped image like that using this technique. So using a spritzer on this, it's just too much moisture. And like I said, it smushes a lot, which smushing is another technique, which I'll show you in a minute. But you would want to use just your breath is enough of a vapor of, of moisture to use for stamping with gelatos. Um, then the smushing technique, because we don't waste any of this medium that we use. The smushing technique is now that I've got this uh, gelato activated with water, I want to get like a marbleized effect. And I'm just going to smoosh it down like that. Did you learn something? I mean, there we go. We have degree courses here in stamping and smooshing. They're official terms. Go check the dictionary. They'll be in the exam. Stamping and smooshing. So now that we've stamped, I've already prepared some of my elements that I've stamped out. And we're going to be doing some fussy cutting. <laughs> How much fun is that? I don't like fussy cutting. That's why I have a brother scan and cut so that I can cut these things with a machine and not using my hands. So I've stamped out my images and I've stamped out my words and I've um, gotten my sentiments all in place. Now I want to color with it or color it in. And I'm going to use some public style pen watercolors, which is a new product that they have, public style pan watercolors. The thing is, that's great to have. But with your gelatos, you have the ability to be able to color your uh, image as well using the gelatos as watercolor, much in the same way that I just showed you uh, by picking it up with a paintbrush after you've scribbled it down and then giving some color to your images. You can also color with the Pit Artist paints or watercolor with the Pit Artist paints in case you haven't seen that before. Let me just get the plastic so I can show you how to color with the Pit Artist paints or watercolor with the Pit Artist paints. I'm gonna just move my stuff like this. <laughs> there we go. So in the same way, I'm gonna put my let me first fill my water brush. I think that would be the best idea. So to fill your water brush, these little graphic water brushes have got a belly uh, that you can put water in. And it screws into the brush side like such. Now, what makes this great is the fact that you don't need to, when you travel around or when you walk around um, and you take your art stuff with, you don't have to carry a bucket for water and different brushes, etc., etc. You can just do it all with your aqua brush. And I'm gonna use that pipette to pick up some water, put it into the belly. I call it a belly, it's probably a barrel, right? The belly, and then screw on my brush head here. Now what makes this great is that this little area right here has got a self-release valve. So you don't have to push and push and work the color to get it through on the other side or the water to get it through on the other side. It is right there. And so what I'm going to show you is how you color then a watercolor with the daughter's paint. What makes that great is the fact that it's permanent. It doesn't reactivate with water. So let's get some blue scribble down because that's just not the worst sound ever. Squeakiness. Pick it up and while it's wet, it'll apply to your little butterfly. 
And once it's dry, it does not reactivate or move with water. It is set. I like the pan colors because they've got some beautiful metallic colors. So the gold and the bronze and the rose gold is just beautiful to add some sparkle because we want to add sparkle to our daily lives all the time, right? Can't be dull, we need some bling. Maybe if you're watching, I don't need diamonds. I just need sparkle. Okay, and then I add some bling to this. Now again, I'm not gonna let you watch this whole process of adding all the gorgeous bling to my project. I've fussy cut ahead of time and I have uh, colored in ahead of time my little butterflies. And I use the the Faber Castell pan colors, and you can see my little gold sparkle over there. And I've got my words cut out. Count your many blessings. Isn't that just what we need, especially in the kind of uh, time of 2020 that we're in? We never skip the busy season. I thought we would at least skip the busy season, but we never. It's just now all kinds of noise everywhere. Um, and if you've worked at your house for a long time, like I have, and you are kind of tired of just your own company and have found yourself listening to yourself, <laughs> complaining a whole lot, uh, my husband always says that if I can't find anything to be thankful for, then I should say thank you for breath, which usually is followed by a thank you for breath. I don't like it, but once you start with thankfulness or gratitude, it just kind of flows into your life and it you find more and more things to be grateful for. So that's why I'm counting my blessings. I'm counting them one by one. And I've got a little saying here that says gratitude helps you fall in love with the life you already have, which is what it's about. Okay, so let's move this aside and get working on our project again. Am I aside? All off? Clean space? <laughs> I'm a messy crafter. Is anyone else a messy crafter? Anyone else a messy crafter? I know I'm a messy crafter, so uh, forgive me for that. So I'm going to put my, my sentiment in here and I'm going to use that Tombow glue if I can pick it up. <laughs> okay, Tombow glue that I just put aside. So like I said, absolute messy crafter. I'm going to stick it down. We really just need a little bit of this onto your element or your words and you stick it down. I want to incorporate the dimension here. So sticking it down that way. And then go count your many blessings. Now, if this doesn't stand out enough to you, then we do the same that we just did with the pencil. We add the pencil around it. And again, rough, messy outlines. Do you know why messy outlines? Because then if something's not perfect, it's intended to not be. So <laughs> no one will pick up your mistakes if you do the messiness like that. And like I said, the, the gold fiber aqua pencils are activated with water. So they just look like they melt straight into this background, give it some dimension there. And immediately your little element pops. Just shows a bit brighter. You can also do that with your Pedrotis pens. Uh, you can grab a black and outline it. And what I've done before is while it's then wet or still like that, you can blend it with your finger a little bit, making it just melt into the page. I'm going to show you just making it melt into the page or into the outline, like such. 
I'll show you in a minute. So, so literally just giving it that little bit of pop that you want. Okay. Once that is done, I do want to add a little bit of extra. I did have that other piece that I cut out that says gratitude helps you fall in love with the life you already have. I'm going to try my hand at lettering. So the little stamp set's got the word gratitude, but I don't want it to be on white and to fussy cut that word's going to be just a lot of work that I don't want to do. <laughs> So I'm going to try and write it. And here's the excellent opportunity to practice your writing. Now, if you want to do it with a pencil first and then do it with a pen, that's fine. Uh, you can erase over the gelatas and the gel medium and all of that stuff. Um, I'm going to use, let's try gold, shall we? Because we want some bling. There's also the Pizzotas pen in metallics, which I love. So let's do... Gratitude. Let's just jump, shall we? We're jumping and writing out the word gratitude. Somebody needs to check my spelling. Now, the great part about learning how to letter is that there are so many tutorials on YouTube that will just give you that kind of idea or instruction, and then you can go and practice. That is just it. Trust me, if this accountant right here can do it, then so can you. Uh, it's just practice, practice, practice. Okay, so gratitude, and then we want to say, I just want to stick down this little word, and I'm going to show you the cursor image of what it's going to look like. Gratitude helps you fall in love with the life you already have. See that? Okay, so now I've got different dimensions to my project. I've got some words that are written straight onto. You can also stamp it straight onto your project and then some other ones that are on top of using that little white um, cutout that you that you use. So stamping on different pieces of paper and using that in your artwork as well. The type of glue that I use in thin Bible pages, uh, I pretty much really always use the Tombow Mono. Um, here we go. Let me just give it to you. Like this. Tombow Mono multi-liquid glue. So it's got a fine tip and a broad tip. Glue comes out very well. The thing is, I like this glue because it doesn't go through. So in a, in a few uh, days or months, you see that you don't, that some of the glues will make like a sticky or an oily residue on the back of the Bible pages specifically. This one I find does not. So this is worth the investment. You use very little um, of it to, to glue. And I glue all my cutouts using this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> One of my favorite questions, and probably the question I get the most, is writing over gelatos. So yes, when you water activate or heat set, and preferably heat set because it kind of melts that waxiness off, you can then write over gelatos with a pit or pen when you heat set it. So heat setting is not with a hairdryer. A hairdryer will just blow air, whereas a heat gun or a heat tool physically distributes heat, melting that waxy layer off or into the page. And once you've heat set it, I have found successfully in my Bible to write over with my very beloved but artist pens. Trust me, if you've tried without removing the waxy layer and you have to throw away your anything, micro and but artist pens, all of those felt pens, you'll have to throw away if you're going to be writing directly over the gelato um, while it's not heat set. I have tried that and you have to chuck it. But you can use, like on this surface now, I have water activated it. You can use your pit of spent over this um, once you've water activated or heat set. Okay. The specific glossy accents that I've used today, or like I said, you do get glossy accents by Ranger, and then you get this is Anita's 
clear 3D gloss, which is available at European A's or art stores like that. So let's get back to our little element. We want to stick our beautiful butterflies onto this specific project. And for this purpose, I want the little wings to kind of be 3D. I want it to be dimensional. I don't want it stuck down in its entirety. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue onto the body, onto the body here. Okay. Now you can do that with either your multi-liquid glue, the Tombow multi-liquid glue, or you can then use your 3D glossy accents. This will take longer to dry. This will dry quicker. So I'm going to just put a little bit using the fine tip of this glue, which comes out white and dries clear. Shaking it to get it out. Okay, there we go. Little bit on the body. So I'm just going to stick my body down and not the whole butterfly. And I want it close to my words. So I'm keeping my focus point together. Stuff down there. And another one. So you just give it a slight bend. Butterflies are full. There we go. Stick down a little bit of glue again. And that would be all the glue you need to then bring your eye down to this bottom sentiment. Okay. I'm not 100% happy with the gratitude. I can't see it pop. So I want to see if I can maybe do it with a darker color so that we can see it a bit better. Um, so that it doesn't disappear into the background. Let's see. You can use your brush pens as well. There we go, this looks better. So it's got some bling and some, some sparkle. I think this is the ruby metallic. A little bit of stink, pink sparkle. Stink sparkle. There we go. And I'm um, just curling the letters. There's something called fake calligraphy. If you can't do real brush lettering, you do fake brush lettering by just thickening up the one stroke that goes down every time on the down stroke. Okay. That already stands out quite a bit more and I wanna just do a little bit extra on this bottom white piece. And I'm gonna outline it again using my black, my black pencil which I'll then activate with some water afterwards. If you want a more permanent effect, obviously you'll use a Fedotis pen. I'm saying permanent, I mean harsh, like direct, bright outline. That works for me. Okay, so that would be in the inside of my, of my, journal page or my insert for my specific journal. I do want to add just a little bit of let's see, some scribbles just to finish it up. And that pretty much, I think, is happiness. If you do have areas that have been uh, messed up a little bit, you can always use a kneadable eraser or a dust-free eraser. Otherwise, like you'll see in the journal that I made, I covered this with acrylic paint, um, with acrylic paint in my journal. Okay, so let's maybe go over what I used just so that we can uh, you can go and write your little shopping list for husband to spend the credit card that you didn't use to do the stenciling with the gel medium, the other card, the actual credit card that he has. <laughs> so make your little list. Okay, I'm going to go through it quickly. Okay, I'm going to go through it quickly. 
We used gel medium for the resist technique and the specific gel medium that I used is the 13 Arts multi-purpose gel medium. I used a foundation makeup contour brush, which has got a little oval head to pick up my gelato, which is my, uh, not my pigment um, that I need, the color pigment. What color credit card? <laughs> <laughs> a gold, <laughs> platinum. <laughs> um, I use the iridescent range of gel gelatos. They are the galaxy colors. The fun fact about that is, and you can go have a look at my unboxing of those on my, on my channel, is they react different on black than what they do on white. So on the black surfaces, there's a, there's a lunar color that actually is white in, I'm going to show you, literally it's white in it in the look of it but if you use it over black it is purple it's the most stunning game to play is to see how that it, how these colors react on black and on white so i use the iridescent gelatos i did use my faber castell um, pan watercolors which is a new product from faber castell i used pit artist pens i used my gold faber aqua um, pencils, they are activated with water, so they become like a watercolor with water. I use the Anita's Clear Gloss. It's Anita's Clear Gloss, GB Gloss. You can also use glossy accents. Um, as always, I use my very trusted Tombow Multi-Liquid Glue. Um, I've actually even done foiling with this. Lots of fun. You need to go check out all the socials and come to Bobby X. So we can show you how to use all these products. I use a aqua brush. Well, I call it an aqua brush. I know it's got a smart art and graphic brush, water brush, all kinds of names. But there you go. It's got water in its tummy. And uh, we don't have to travel with a whole bunch of stuff. What else did I use? I used some Felicity Jane stamps for myself. Uh, you obviously use what you have. Use the stamps that you have. Um, find a sentiment that works for you. If you can't find a sentiment that works for you, then write your own. Uh, what else? Oh, palette knife, card. I think that's it. Perfect. And then to show off the project, I'll show it here. You can see all the gloss in your little circles your butterflies, your sentiment, go out, be grateful today. I'm really grateful for this opportunity to share today with you. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope to see you again soon. Wow, what a fantastic session. I hope you have all learned as much as I did from Rochelle today. It is clear to see why she is our very own gelato queen. If you want to watch the session again, this webinar will be available soon to watch on demand on the Hobby X, Faber Castell, and La Rochelle Bible Journaling Facebook pages. If we did not get to your question today, we will also share answers with you soon. Thank you so much for taking the time today for joining us. And remember to visit Hobby X from 29 April to 2 May next year at the Kailami Grand Prix Circuit and International Convention Center to attend more of these interactive sessions with Faber Castell and Rochelle and meet the gelato queen in real life. We will see you there. Goodbye. Goodbye.